The canvas element in HTML is used to add graphics to a web page. We saw in the previous video that we need to go through JavaScript for using canvas in HTML. It's not possible for everyone to know JavaScript. So if you're following this playlist and wants to get go step by step, you might have thought it's not easy to understand canvas, but HTML provides an easy alternative to the canvas element. HTML uses the SVG element to support SVG images. A container is included in SVG graphics that can be used to generate a variety of forms, including boxes, pathways, text, graphic images, and circles. The majority of modern browsers support this HTML tag. So let's understand what SVG is. Scalable vector graphic is referred to as SVG. SVG can be used to create web-based vector graphics. It is an XML-based specification for two-dimensional based curve vector graphics. The W3C guidelines also encourage the use of animation for every property and element in SVG files. Even W3C standards DOM and XSL are also supported by SVG. Enough of this theory part, I guess. Let's move ahead and we'll now go through the syntax for adding an SVG to a web page. This SVG element can draw multiple shapes with several elements and attributes. The main function of the SVG element in particular is to provide the area for a shape. So what we can do is we can move to the body section of a HTML document and we'll write over here SVG. So this is the element. So Save the program and you can see nothing is happening over here as of now. So we'll use some attributes with the SVG element. We'll write over here width. Width is going to be let's say 350 or let's say 300. Fine. Then we'll write here height. We'll define the height as well. And we'll write over here height is equals to 300 as well let's say. Now we are going to use the style attribute. So we are going to write over here border. And we are going to define the border for this SVG. So we'll write over here one pixel solid and black in color. Fine. Now save the program and the border we have here is for reference only. You guys can see the area covered by the SVG element over the browser. Now any shape we will we want will go inside this box only. So if you guys remember from the previous session, we use JavaScript methods to create different shapes on a web page. That's not the case with SVG. Several elements and attributes are present for creating shapes like circles, lines, rectangles, and ellipses. We'll go through them one by one. So let's start with circle. To create a circle within the SVG area, we have the circle element present in HTML. So what we have to do is we have to write here inside the SVG element, we'll mention circle. So this is also an element. Now we have to use certain attributes within the circle elements. So let's use them. We'll write over here CX. CX is going to be, let's say 150. Then we'll write over here CY. CY is going to be 150 again. Then we'll write over here R. R is going to be, let's say 40. Then we have stroke. So stroke is going to be, let's say black. And we'll write over here stroke width. Fine. So we'll write stroke width over here. Stroke width is going to be, let's say, 5. And we'll write fill as well. So fill is going to be, let's say, blue. Fine. Now, we'll use this because we have already mentioned that this is XML based. Fine. So save the program. And you can see the circle. The CX and CY attributes we use here define the X and Y coordinates of the circle's center. The value 150 means that the circle center will be situated at the center of this whole box. R here refers to the radius of the circle. Moreover, the stroke attribute is used to define the border color of the circle. The stroke with width attribute is used to define the width of the border. So the width of the border in this particular case is 5. Fine. Now, the fill attribute is for the color of the circle. So the value of fill attribute we used here is blue. That's why the circle is blue in color. Fine. So you can see the circle present over here on the browser. It's easy to create a circle with SVG than using a canvas for the same task. Right. Let us know in the chat section if you guys are feeling the same. 
we can also omit the cx and cy attributes here. In that case, the circle center will not move, will move to the top left corner of this box. So let's do it once. What we'll do is we'll remove these cx and cy attribute. Fine. Now save the program. And here you can see the circle is present at the top left corner of a SVG area. Fine. Creating a line is also an easy task. So what we have to do is Let's do one thing. We'll remove this circle from here and we'll write the code for line. Fine. So we'll write line over here. Now we are going to use certain attributes for this as well. So we'll write over here x1 is equals to 0. Then we'll write over here y1 is equals to 0. Then we have x2 and y2. So we'll write over here x2 is 300 and y2 is 300 again. Fine. Now we are going to use some similar attributes like the stroke one. So we'll write over here stroke as blue. Then we have stroke width. So we'll write over here stroke width. Stroke width is going to be let's say 3. Fine. Now we'll write over here fill again. Fill is going to be blue again or we can change it to any other color as well. So let's use red over here once. Now the x1 attribute we used over here with value as 0. So this attribute defines the start of the line on the x-axis. Similarly, the y1 attribute defines the start of the line on the y-axis. The x2 attribute defines the end point of this line on the x-axis and the y2 attribute defines the end of the line on the y-axis. Rest all the attributes we used are similar to the ones we used for the circle element. Now save the program and you can see the line present over here within the SVG. So you must have seen here that the line is blue in color, but we have used the fill as red. So fill attribute does not work with the line element. So the stroke attribute works. So let's do one thing. We'll change the value of stroke to red. Fine. So here you can see that the line is red in color now. The next shape we are going to create is a rectangle. The rect element is used to create a rectangle or its variations as well. So let's create a rectangle here. What we'll do is we'll remove this line and otherwise you guys will get confused. So we are going to write over here rect and we are going to define the width and height again. So width is going to be let's say 150 and height we are going to write here as 200. Fine. Now we have to write here stroke again. Stroke is going to be black. And then we have to mention the stroke width and the fill attribute. So we'll write over here stroke width again. Stroke width is going to be let's say 5 again. And we'll write over here fill is equals to let's say yellow. Fine. Now we have to close this and we have to close this element as well. Save the program. And here you can see the stroke is black but this rectangle is not working totally fine. So let me check once if everything is fine. So we have to write here yellow, save it. And now you can see the rectangle we have here is yellow in color with black borders. Fine. We can also create a square by using similar values for the width and height attributes. So what we need to do is we need to give similar width and height. So we'll write 150 here as well. And now save the program and here you can see this is a square with yellow color and black border. Fine. We can make several other changes to this shape like we can change the position of this shape within the SVG area. For that we need to mention two more attributes the X attribute and the Y attribute. So what we'll do is we'll mention X over here as let's say 125 and Y again over here as 125. Fine. The rectangle's left position is determined by the x attribute. For example, x is equals to 50 positions the rectangle 125 pixels from the left margin or we can say 50 pixels from the left margin. The rectangle's top location is determined by its y attribute. Fine. So save the program and here you can see the rectangle is present in a different location now. So we can create a rectangle with rounded corners as well. We need to add two more attributes here. So we are adding attributes again and again. So it might sound a little bit tricky, but it's the easiest way to add shapes to a web page. So we have to mention two more attributes. 
Try it by yourself guys and you guys will understand how it actually works. So we'll write over here Rx and Ry. So Ry is going to be 20 again. Save it now and here you can see a square with rounded corners. Simple and easy. So let's move further and now we'll create an ellipse as well. So a circle and an ellipse have many similarities. The distinction is that a circle has an equal x and y radius. Whereas an ellipse has a different x and y radius. For creating an ellipse, we use the ellipse element in HTML. So what we'll do is we'll create an ellipse over here again. So let me just remove this rectangle from here so that it will be easy for you guys to understand. So we'll remove this rectangle and now we are going to create an ellipse over here. Fine. So we'll write over here ellipse. So you guys need to remember the spellings and all the pronunciations of these elements. So we'll write over here CX. CX is going to be 150 again for ellipse. Then we'll write over here CY as 150 again. So we'll write CY as 150. Then we have RX. RX is going to be 100. And then we'll write over here RY, which is going to be 50. Then we'll write stroke. Stroke is going to be, let's say, black. Fine. The border color of our ellipse is going to be black. Then we'll write over here stroke width. And the stroke width is going to be, let's say, 2. Then we'll write over here fill. Fill is going to be blue. Now we have to close this and this. Fine. The CX attribute defines the X coordinate of the center of the ellipse. The similarly, the CY attribute defines the Y coordinate of the center of the ellipse. The RX attribute defines the horizontal radius and the RY attribute defines the vertical radius of an ellipse. So save the program and here you can see we have the ellipse present here on in the middle of a SVG area. We can also change the center positions of this ellipse by changing the CX and CY attributes. So I want you guys to try it and let us know in the comment section or in the chat section. Now we can also create three ellipses on top of each other. So let's do it. We are going to create three ellipses. Fine. So what we'll do is we'll make certain changes over here. Let's say we have 150 and 140 for the first one. We'll write over here RX as 90 and RY as 30. Fine. So we'll write over here. So we'll remove these two because we are not going to use the border for a ellipses. Fine. So we have this ellipse over here present over here. Now we'll use create another ellipse by using the same ellipse element. We'll write CX is equals to 160. Then we have CY is equals to 120. Then we'll use the RX attribute again. So we'll write over here RX as 80. Then we'll write RY. RY is going to be 20. And we are going to write here fill is equals to let's say red fine we are going to close it save it and here you can see another circle present over the blue circle or we can say ellipse we'll write ellipse once again we'll write cx cx is going to be 180 this time then we have cy as 100 then we have rx once again rx is going to be 70 fine so we'll write rx over here then we'll write ry as well RY we are going to write as 15 and we are going to write here fill as let's say yellow again fine save it and here you can see we have three ellipses present over here on the browser on top of each other so these are some of the shapes we discussed here in this tutorial the list is long and it's not easy to discuss all of them in a single video so I hope you guys must have understood the concept of SVG and how to make certain shapes using SVG element and its attributes. So it's time to say goodbye guys. I'll catch you guys in another session. If you enjoyed this session, then do give it a thumbs up, comment your doubts below and we'll help you. Until then, keep coding and stay tuned to Simply Code. Thank you.